Hello, and welcome to this edition of Wolves Weekly. I'm Danny Barnes, and I'm here today with the head men's and women's track and field coach, Mike Johnson. Hello, I'm here too. <laughs> Good to see you, Danny. Good to see you as well. Yeah. You were gone this last weekend, got to travel down to California. We did. Uh, we went on down. We had two meets uh, on Friday and Saturday. We were at Stanford for the Stanford Invitational, and on Friday we had part of the team over at uh, San Francisco State for their uh, distance carnival and invitational. So we had athletes uh, sometimes competing at both places at the same time. So it, uh, not, I mean, not the same athletes, but of course, but uh, we were split. And then on Saturday, uh, then Stanford was the uh, Stanford was the meet that we were that we were part of. That was the third straight week you've been, the third straight um, meet that you've been a pretty high level competition. You went the week before down to Oregon preview. Well, we, yeah, we do. I mean, that's uh, part of our objective. We're going to get ready for conference and national competition. Uh, we need to see good uh, competitors. We need to uh, we need to win, and we need to find out what it's like to uh, be in the middle of the pack and still be successful. And it's real easy to it's real easy to hurdle when you're in first, but how does it feel when you're in fourth? And can you still make the same performance? Can you still perform as well? And then be able to challenge yourself to use those other people to improve. We have seen some Western Oregon individuals do very well, whether it is maybe even fourth place in their meet, getting great marks, but somebody such as Matt Kano that got that was able to win the 400 meter down at the Oregon preview. It sure. seems like you've had some very strong individuals. This sure, uh, we have, and uh, we've had the people like Matt. And Matt, of course, was uh, conference you know athlete of the week out of that performance. Um, and then people uh, like Chris Reed, uh, who's you know, or, or uh, Ashley Potter, you know, who are finishing fourth or fifth in those. Uh, in those competitions, but competing against uh, national champions or uh, you know former Olympians in their respective events, and uh, and competing with uh, you know with some uh, purpose, you know not just being in the same race. It's not like a road race; you have ten thousand people, and it happens to be that the world record holder was in the race, and you were six hours back. You know, it's not it's not the same thing. Uh, we're in the same race, and we're competing with them. We're in the same field event, we're competing with them. Not beating them yet, but you know that that inspires our people. And I know you like that level of challenge. I know you train hard for it, and you try to put yourself in those tough situations. I, I think what you really need to look at is if you're not doing that, what are you doing? You know, what are we doing? Okay, well let's go out and see who we can knock over this week. That's you know not uh, uh, not as strong a team as we need to challenge. And you'll see when we look at our schedule that there's a number of different meets that we have that provide competition, variety of competition for people at a variety of different levels. So not every, not everyone is ready to compete at that national caliber level. So we provide competition for the people that are at the conference level and people that still need to achieve to get into that level. So it's it's part of a it's part of a purposeful learning experience that we try to give people competition in which they can run up front and then competition where they're challenged to get up front. And right along that same part of the variety, I've also noticed quite a bit that you've been able to do it in the variety of races, uh, not just races, but in the field events, the jumping events. We hope it's a full track team. You know, we, we like to have it that We like to have a complete track team, uh, a team that can score as we did indoors. Uh, the men, as the men won that indoor championship, we scored, I believe, in every event. And that's uh, and that's pretty good. And you're on the bus, and so that the the hurdlers know what the jumpers are doing, and the throwers know what the distance runners are doing, and the distance runners know what the sprinters are doing, and and uh, it's more of a team atmosphere that way as well. And I know that that's the, maybe the thing that gets lost in that sometimes is that track and, people look at track and field as an individual sport. But I know you and Coach Isaac Fredericks, as well as Jared Mentalis and Jessica Harper, really try to get it to be a, a team type of atmosphere here? Well, I think it's easier. I mean, I think it's it's much easier when you are doing something contributing to others as well as trying to reach your own goals. It's, it's, a, it's a much easier thing to do. And so I believe that the team element of it, and, and I think that that's more prevalent in track and field than a lot of people recognize, but I, I think that the team element of it makes the performances better and gives the people 
a way to engage, and also to understand that they don't have to be perfect every week. They just have to try, they just have to do as well as they can each week. And that is, you know, in a sport uh, where, you know, there's not a lot of sports where people really go full speed. And uh, this is an on-the-edge kind of sport. Uh, it's, it's, if, there's, if there's a mainline sport that falls into that extreme category, uh, track and cross country may be that because you're measured to hundreds of seconds and centimeters, and uh, so the margin for error is very small. Tell me a little bit about the rest of your season, what you have coming up in these next couple weeks. Wow, uh, next couple weeks are you know kind of exciting. This is uh, we're we're in the home area for a couple of weeks. We have the Willamette Invitational this week. Their distance carnival is all a carnival on Friday night. is always really a, brings a lot of talent. Uh, elite club talent as well as uh, Division One and Division Two, and three talent uh, from around the Northwest together. We have our home meet here. Uh, then on Friday, uh, April 9th, which we'll have the John Knight Twilight meet, and we'll also have the alumni. And I think we're going to advance the alumni mile a little bit and let this be the alumni and parent mile. So if you have any parents that want to come and join in and create both uh, enthusiasm and uh, and maybe some amusement, you know, for the uh, for the group, we'll be able to do that uh, in that meet. And of course, you know, John and I was, a, you know, fine coach here that preceded me, and that's uh, that's who we've named the event after. Fantastic, coach! It sounds like you have have a great season ahead of you, as yeah. well as what's already behind you. So, thank you very much, Chris Johnson, for joining me on this edition of Bulls Weekly. I'm Danny Barnes, and thank you all for watching.